Hi there. Almost exactly a year ago, I made two videos about a popular frequency counter kit you can get very cheap from China. The counter's main component is a PIC16F628A microcontroller, and in the second of these videos, I described a firmware modification that improved the resolution be below 100 kHz. The assembler source code as well as the hex file for that version are on my GitHub page. I put links to my GitHub repository and the earlier videos in the description below. In the past videos, I go over the origin of this counter and how the original design has been messed up by adding a one transistor circuit for checking oscillator crystals, which has so many flaws that you're better off without it, or as the video shows, changing it to become a preamp for the counter instead. I'm quite happy with this little counter after these changes and it has provided good service over the past year. But a couple of weeks ago I got a comment from Andrew asking if it's possible to change the counter firmware to display revolutions per minute or RPM instead of frequency because he uses it to monitor his lathe. Not owning a lathe, I put a little test setup together just for fun. I'm reading the revolutions of the disc using a reflective optical sensor which creates a pulse every time the black segment goes by. The pulse frequency is shown on the AN8008 multimeter and the PIC16 counter. That cheap motor salvaged from some toy long ago is far from steady as you can see. 18 Hz would be about 1080 RPM. While a direct readout in RPM instead of using a calculator or a conversion table would be very convenient, it doesn't make sense to just multiply the frequency shown by 60 because the 1 Hz resolution is just too coarse. Let's rev it up a bit. The poor thing is making quite some noise and the vibration is about to shake my setup apart. One hundred hertz would be six thousand RPM. So the first problem is to increase the resolution of the frequency measurement, and even if you are not interested in RPM, that would be a useful improvement to have anyway. Using some tricks I'll explain later, I managed to do just that. Here's the new firmware in action. It is hard to tell because of the different update rates and the fluctuation of the motor, but if you compare the readout with the AN8008, they are pretty close. The counter remembers if it's in RPM or frequency mode. If you want to change, simply hold the button during power up and it toggles the setting. Now we're reading RPM instead of frequency.
In case you did not trust the multimeter or the PIC-16, the scope trace of the pulses from the reflectivity sensor shows that the motor RPM is really fluctuating quite a lot. So let's move to a more predictable environment with a function generator instead. Here's the counter hooked up to the FY6600 function generator set to 150Hz. Since that is above the threshold for period measurement, it shows the value in kilohertz resolution as before. At 100Hz the period measurement kicks in Setting the input to 89.90 works fine. Now 89.89. An arbitrary frequency of 79.66 Hz. 10.66 Hz. 10.26 Hz. Notice that the update is much faster now. I want to show what happens at 2 Hz and below because that is where the new method has a problem. 1.99 is fine, slowly decreasing the frequency. 1.96 suddenly jumping to 1.0 and back to 1.96. In fact, this happens more and more often the lower the frequency get as long as it is above 1 Hz. If you drop below 1, this happens. I'll explain why in just a moment, but let's first have a quick look at how frequency counters work. In principle, all frequency counters have three components, which could be implemented in hardware or software. There's the pulse counter itself, and a gate that can be controlled to let the input pulses through to the counter or not. And finally, a very accurate time base that enables the gate only for a precise time period, for example one second. Just before doing that, the gate usually also resets the counter. In this example, the counter counted 12,345 pulses in the one second the gate connected it to the input. This means the frequency of the input was 12.345 kHz. Most frequency counters implement multiple time base values and usually some auto ranging to select the one giving the best resolution. So far so good, but what if you want to measure rather low frequencies, such as generated by a sensor creating a pulse for every rotation of a motor? In this example the motor is turning at 350 rpm, which generates a pulse train with a frequency of 5.833 Hz. The frequency counter with a gate time of 1 second will count exactly 5 pulses. The gate closes just before the sixth pulse could have been registered. We could convert the 5 Hz to an RPM readout by multiplying the frequency by 60 and see, of course, 300 RPM. Obviously, this isn't a very good solution because a gate time of one second means the frequency is always in full Hz with nothing in between and as a consequence the RPM values jump in increments of 60. One simple way to improve the resolution for low frequencies is to make the gate time longer. For example, a 10 second gate time would now allow the counter to count to 58 pulses, which it would display with a decimal point as 5.8 and convert to RPM gives a value of 348, which is much better. But a huge drawback is that every change in the motor speed would take 10 seconds before you see any change in the display. And controlling anything with such a lag between doing a change and seeing effect in the readout would be terrible. The proper solution for low frequency measurement is to rearrange the components of the frequency counter. We turn the gate around so that its open or closed state is now controlled by the input signal. The time base which previously controlled the gate is now a frequency generator of a reasonably high constant frequency, for example 1 kHz, acting as the input to the counter. Our well-known input signal of 5.833 Hz has a period of 0.171 seconds 
That means the elapsed time between two pulses. Because the input is controlling the gate, the 1 kHz signal can get through to the counter for 0.171 seconds. And at 1000 pulses per second, this means a counter value of 171. It is easy to convert these 171 pulses to either a frequency of 5.848 Hz or an RPM readout of 351. You can see that this method gets us much closer to the true value without massively delaying the readout. If we want, we can improve the accuracy by using a higher generator frequency or taking multiple measurements and averaging them. Let's see how we can do this in this case for the PIC16 frequency counter. Don't worry, I'm not going into the details. You can download the source and I put lots of comments in, so if you're interested in how it really works, by all means have a look. To count pulses, the program uses the PIC16's timer 0, which has only 8 bit, but it has a programmable 8 bit prescaler, which allows the input frequency to be divided by ratios from 1 to 1 to 1 to 256 before it reaches the counter. Still, for high frequencies, the 8-bit value needs to be checked often enough to reliably detect when it overflows and use that information to maintain a software-only extension representing 24 bits of frequency with a resolution of 1 Hz. The most surprising part is maybe how the time base is implemented by using the code itself. The function count pulses shown in orange here is called with a gate count specifying the desired time in 20 microsecond in increments. This works because the code in this function is carefully designed to always take exactly 100 instructions from beginning to end no matter what branches and activities are executed in between. The 100 instructions take 400 clock cycles and with a 20 MHz clock this equates to exactly 20 microseconds. The main program loop on the left here calls this function actually twice every loop. The first time the gate count is set very short, just the equivalent of 1 30th of a second. This, this measurement is just for getting a rough idea of the frequency at the input and decide on the best gate count and prescale value. For the low frequencies we are currently interested in, the gate count will always be 50,000 or 1 second and the prescaler 1 to 1. With these numbers, count pulses is called again for the actual measurement and the result is then displayed. Since I want to keep the existing frequency measuring function, adding measure, measuring periods for low frequencies is not easy. Basically the only places are shown in blue. We have 48 instructions in the count pulses loop to play with and all that code about adding intermediate frequencies when using the counter as a frequency display for radios. First to the change in the count pulses function using the 32 of the 48 spare instructions. On top you see the input frequency and below what happens in the count pulses function with a thick black line here indicating the one second interval where the gate count decrements from 50,000 on the left here to zero on the right. The normal processing in count pulses is still going on, so the function checks timer zero and updates the 24-bit frequency variable. At the end, it reports a frequency of 5 Hz as it did before. The new code concerns these four variables here and only executes when the frequency value has just been updated. At the start we have to wait for the first increment from 0 to 1 before doing anything. The reason for the wait is that we have no idea when count pulses function was started relative to the input frequency. 
like on this diagram we could be already halfway through the period of the input signal so the first increment of the frequency is the signal that we have found a rising edge of the signal when the counter rolls over to one we take a snapshot of the current gate count 45,111 in this case and store it in P start. From then onwards at every increment of the counter the software calculates the difference to P start as shown here is a graph or here is the number and keeps it as the ever getting longer accumulated period time while also incrementing a counter called p count that shows how many times this happened at the end we have an accumulated period for example in this case 39973 and p count shows that this was the result of measuring four periods we can then calculate the average period by simply dividing the period sum by p count multiplying it with 20 microseconds to get seconds and take the reciprocal value to get frequency in this case 5.003 hertz there's an additional period old value which always keeps the accumulated period of the previous p count value in this example it would be 29,980 which was the result when p count was just 3. I explain later why this is sometimes needed. The formula you just saw for converting the accumulated period into average period and then into frequency is very awkward if you have no floating point math. The situation in the PIC16 is worse because not only has it no floating point but also just 8 bit integer add and subtract in, and those even don't take care of the carry bit so you have to roll your own 32-bit add and subtract routines and based on these 32-bit multiplication and division functions welcome back to the stone age of computing a bit rearranging of the original formula yields this result with just one multiplication and one division and hence easier to implement with good accuracy because we don't have floating point we can deliberately make the nominator as large as possible because that way we effectively shift the decimal point and get what is called fixed point arithmetic for frequency I decided to multiply the nominator with 1000 so an integer result of 1000 actually means 1.000 Hertz in other words, the results will be integers in millihertz. At the same time, we can conveniently take care of the RPM conv conversion by choosing 600 instead of 1000 as the scale factor, and we get integer deci RPMs. So 1000 in this case actually means 100.0 RPM. There is the slight problem that while p count is only an 8 bit value, the calculation of the nominator will overflow a 32 bit unsigned multiplication. If p count exceeds 85 for frequencies or 143 for RPM, hence I implemented this solution that will halve the p count and the period, of course, if 70 is exceeded. Halving can be implemented very efficiently through a right bit shift but there is the complication that integer halving an odd value will drop the 0.5 part for a period this loss of accuracy isn't the problem but for p count which is multiplied by a huge number as you can see the 0.5 difference completely messes up the result the fix for that is if p count is odd and we need to half it we use p count minus one instead which is of course even and therefore divides by two with no remainder but then we also need to use the p count minus one matching period which happens to be handily available as period old as i explained earlier because of the danger of overflow multiplication and the timing 
discussed yet. next, I restricted the frequency range to 100 Hz and below and 255 Hz or below for RPM. Forcing a tiny 8-bit controller to do lots and lots of 32-bit math will unsurprisingly cause a bit of a timing issue. As you may be aware, multiplication is really repeated addition and since p-count is limited to a maximum of 126, we can get our final nominator with a maximum of 126 32-bit additions, which is fairly quick even on a PIC-16. The pseudocode is shown here. For the division, this is not the case, and the higher the frequency or RPM, the longer the division takes. I originally implemented this as a straightforward repeated subtraction as you see here, and it took, at the worst case, slightly less than a second to do 153,000 subtractions, but because the display multiplexing stopped during that time, the last digit glowed with super bright intensity while the rest of the display was dark. Not very healthy for the 7 segment displays and I turned off the power immediately. I then decided to turn the display off completely before entering the division loop. That worked better, but caused a very disturbing blinking effect the higher the frequency went. I also noticed that the timer could reset at the highest frequencies because the watchdog timer had triggered. In the end, and reluctantly, I added the full-blown code to keep the display multiplexed and the watchdog timer reset while doing the subtraction. This made the loop even slower, so we are looking at 1.5 to 2 seconds update rate at high frequencies, but it's far less noticeable because the display stays on all the time. In any case, for lower frequencies, the update rate is hardly affected at all, and at least I can live with 1.5 to 2 seconds update rate if I get accurate results. And speaking of accuracy, you may have noticed that I calculated the frequency to 3 digits behind the decimal point. If the clock frequency of the peak is reasonably accurate, 20 MHz, the millihertz digit is spot on for frequencies of about 45 Hz and lower, but for higher frequencies we should really only use two digits behind the decimal point. So there is one last step before showing the result of all the TDS math on the display and that is rounding away the least significant digit. For frequencies between 1 and 2 Hz, this is what happens. Imagine an input signal of 1.5 Hz which has a period of 0.66 seconds. What you will see on the display depends on when the counter called the count pulses function, shown as the one second black bar here, in relation to the input. Since that is not fixed, the starting point will continuously drift from one measurement to the next. In the first example, the start was such that it just called the rising slope of the input and counted one. 0.66 seconds later, the count pulses function is still running and detects the second rising slope and counts two, while the period measuring add-on springs into action and stores the period together with a p-count of one. When count pulses finishes after one second, it has the traditional frequency result of two hertz and the new period-based frequency of 1.5 hertz, which we show on the display. At the next measuring period, we are not so lucky and just missed the rising slope of the input. By the time the next rising slope is detected, count pulses is already more than halfway done. It terminates before a period can be measured. In this case, the display shows 1.00, which is the default if no period was detected. The traditional frequency count is also 1. This explains why in the frequency range from just below 2 Hz to 1 Hz, 
the display alternates between the correct value and 1.00, and the closer the frequency gets to 1 Hz, the more likely is the 1.00 display. If the frequency falls below 1 Hz, something else happens. Because the input period is now longer than the runtime of count pulses, the period measuring algorithm can never produce a valid result and will always default to 1.00. The traditional frequency counting method will occasionally catch a rising slope and report 1, otherwise the reported frequency is 0. If the reported frequency is 0, the original display software's underflow detection kicks in and the counter actually shows underflow, which is 4 spaces and a 0. This is the reason that the display alternates between 1.00 and a single zero. There's not much one can do about these cases, but since it only affects the range from 0 to 2 Hz and the display is pretty clear in showing what happened, I decided to live with it. For completeness, here is the counter switch to RPM and of course it has the same issues, except that it shows 60 instead of 1.00 in the range below 2 Hz. Revving it up, we can go to 100 Hz or 6000 RPM, which is the limit for frequency measurement using period, but in RPM mode we can accept up to 255 Hz. At that top end, we have an error of 1 RPM, which is still quite reasonable. Last not least, I want to show these two tables. The first one shows how the old firmware and the new firmware behave for frequencies from 0 to 256 Hz. For anything above 256, the two firmware versions behave the same. I just want to point out that frequencies will switch from the new format Hertz with two de decimal points to the old format kilohertz for frequencies above 100 and RPM will simply switch to frequency display above 15,359 RPM. It will automatically switch back to RPM if the frequency falls back into the RPM range. The second table shows that the old firmware had a couple of features meant for people who use the counter as frequency displays for their radios. The new firmware doesn't have that anymore. If you're planning to use the counter in a radio, you would not be interested in low frequencies or RPM anyway, so stick with the old firmware. The old firmware assembler source still supports several build options for different clock speeds and 7 segment displays, but the binary I publish was only for variant 2, which is what seems to be what the Chinese implemented in their kits sold on eBay. The new firmware doesn't support the slow clock speed anymore, so if you happen to have a 4 MHz version, you can't use the new code. The Options for common cathode displays are still there and can be active, activated if you need it. Not shown in the table but worth mentioning, both firmware versions assume 5 digit displays. There are some early versions of this kit that only use 4 digits and the code won't shown correctly on these variants. Well that's it, you find the code and the hex file on my github page, link in the description below. Thanks for watching.